Brothers and sisters, we encounter Jesus' transfiguration in our gospel today. Knowing our own need for transformation, we ask for God's healing and forgiveness for the times we have sinned. And we say, I confess sinners to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, Give us our sins and bring us to our everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
God our loving Father, you have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son. Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. So we shall listen to our readings today, but earlier on, I remember last week there was a lady who approached me and says that she has allergies with, you know, wheat. Okay, she's right there. So we're going to prepare, uh, we're going to prepare something for you instead of the post. Just give me a hands up, please. So I'll just stay right there on the side. Thank you. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to the him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these gifts, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other, but the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. The sound of my call, have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. Your presence, O oh Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not in anger repel your servant. You are my helper, cast me off not. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Jews. Join with others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have told you and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lovely body to confirm form with this glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, in this way, stand firm in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. the question what 
And what was the transfiguration all about? It was the experience of Jesus. It was the experience of Peter, James, and John while they were praying. Jesus was at prayer at the Mount of Tabor. Remember, every time the Lord Jesus would get into a situation where he would have to proclaim the glory of God, he would first go to a silent place in solitude or in the wilderness, and in this case, in the mountain. And most of the time when we speak about mountain, there, just like Moses, when he experienced the presence of this God of the covenant, he presented himself at Mount Sinai, in the mountain. And it, this is called theophany, the revelation of God. Now, but why? The question is why? Well, we have to get the context. Jesus, after the transfiguration, will have to go through. He will undergo, in my mind, I'm, I'm thinking in Spanish right now, rechazo. Rechazo means, rechazo means you will be hated and you will be rejected by people. And that was the experience of Jesus. He was rejected, he was mocked, and he would have to suffer and be crucified and he would die. That is the whole context of what Jesus was about to undergo. And he understood that as a human being, Jesus says, I cannot do this, my God. In fact, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he again presented to God, the Father, I know this is what you want for me, but I don't think I can do this. But then Jesus says, not my will, but your will be done. And because of that, God the Father understood his human son, who was also divine. And because of the prayer that Jesus had, he had this immediate experience of the glory of God shining forth, reminding him, through Moses, in the vision, remember, Moses and Elijah presented themselves. You are the fulfillment of the covenant that I made with my people. My son, I want you to remember that. And then, as far as Elijah was concerned, God was telling Jesus, remember Elijah the prophet and all the great prophets proclaimed about you and this is the promise that I made the promise of salvation. And then God didn't stop there. And I preached to you about this last week, last Sunday, and this is still connected to last Sunday. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Because without that sonship, that identity of Jesus as divine, he will continue to be a human being terrified and wanting to quit. But that's not all. Why did God reveal this to Peter, James, and John? Because they too will undergo his suffering, his death, and he will, they will carry the cross of Christ. It is the same thing with us, brothers and sisters. We cannot escape the cross. And Jesus is presenting to us this possibility of being given a consolation, a spiritual consolation, before we experience the difficulties of life. We have to embrace our cross, but with faith and with courage and with dignity because we are sons and daughters of a 
loving Father. In Carmelite spirituality, the consolation is called contemplative sparks. I am going back to my Carmelite roots, and that is what I am giving to you, brothers and sisters. I cannot escape my being a Carmelite. Even though I have left the order of Carmel, I continue to be a Carmelite. Now, in the Carmelite spirituality, John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila would teach the world, especially Christendom, that there is what you call the dark night of faith. La noche oscura de la fe. The dark night of faith. What is this dark night of faith? It is when we are destined beyond our capacity to endure. It is when we undergo all the difficulties of life and we say, God, are you still there? I cannot see you anymore. I cannot experience you anymore. You are not here. And remember the cloud and the, the cloud in the transfiguration. This is the cloud, the noche oscura, oscura, the dark night of faith. And in the case of Moses, this was the darkness that happened before Jesus, God, presented himself, the power of God, the light that came out of the offering that he was giving. What can we do when we are in the midst of difficulties? We pray. I remember my mom. She was in Seattle. I was in New Jersey. I had a great experience, a terrible experience of depression. I was already a priest. You, Father? You went through depression? Yes, I'm a human being too. I went through great depression. And so I spoke to my mother and said, Mom, I cannot handle this anymore. And on the other line, she says, she screamed her lungs out, Son, you are a priest for God's sakes. You know what to do. <laughs> what am I to do, Mom? Let us pray together. So we prayed, and I learned my lesson from my mother. And now, brothers and sisters, remember, my mom is, is undergoing her last few moments of her journey in life. She may go anytime. And last Sunday, while I was preaching, I was so heavy deep inside myself. And I said, what tristeza, what grief I have right now. Two days after, I learned a lesson from God. What was this lesson? I was right here, in the middle of the consecration. I didn't know what was happening. It was just a contemplative spark, a few seconds of knowledge. And it said, and maybe God told me, what did he say? There is power in grief. There is power in grief when you're almost undergoing depression. Know that in the midst of the darkness, I am there. I am I can vanquish all your sadness and your depression. Whatever mental anguish you have, I can conquer it because I am God. Do you trust me, son? Do you trust me, my daughter? That was the experience of the transfiguration of Jesus. That is the experience of each and every one of us. If we surrender our lives before God and say, God, 
I cannot handle this anymore. This is beyond my human capacity to endure and understand. Are you still there, God? And God would say in the darkness, I am here, son. Trust me. Hold my hand. I will never abandon you. Then we shall experience the resurrection. That is the power of prayer. New life, and we become transformed. We become a new creation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father of all our ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten out of me, consubstantial the Father, through him in all things remain, for us many for our salvation he came down to him. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious time. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to seek them on the hand of him. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the cross. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess the baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In the spirit of the covenant that God made with the chosen people, we present our needs, we present our petitions, knowing that our Father has already heard our prayer. For all who dedicate themselves to God's love, that when tested, they follow Abraham's example of faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For patient leaders of nations, that they strive again and again for a permanent end to war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect preparing for Easter sacraments, that their community sustain them in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those living under tyranny, that their faith in God be an enduring source of strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that no members feel alienated or alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us remember members of our families, friends who are undergoing depression, or those who are in crisis right now. We stop and pray for them. Father in heaven, present your love to each and every one of the people who are undergoing darkness, who do not see you anymore, who do not feel you, who do not understand what's going on in their lives. Let them not cling to any form of addiction or to anything that will lead them away from you. Lead them back to you. Let the Spirit of God lead them back to you and see the light again. All these we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now please be seated. Brothers and sisters, thank you for your generosity. Um, we are trying to survive as a community 
we owe money from the diocese, so we're trying to pay our outstanding debts, which I inherited. So please help us. Our second collection is to pay off our outstanding debts. Thank you for your love for this parish.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal time, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that your help is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that we're taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, all the clergy and the religious. Remember also Blanche Kilman, Philip Fligo, Janet Hayes, Laverne Oyarso, Milagros Hansen, Richard Bradford. Alan and Aida Flores, Edna Flores, Wilson Castro, Ramon Cuevas, our loved ones, our friends, relatives, and benefactors who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O we particularly those with cancer and for their healing. But with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, your most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. the rest of the child Jesus, John of the Cross, Teresa of Anna, and all the Carmelite saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us come before the throne of grace, present to Him all our need and confidence as we our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, our power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the peace of Jesus Christ. There is healing when we do that. Greet your neighbors with the peace of Jesus Christ. So, the past Lamb of God, God you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, God you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, God you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And Lord Jesus Christ, you faith in your love and mercy. I eat your body and drink your blood. That the God will be condemnation, but help in mind and body, and a healing remedy. Brothers and sisters, behold Jesus Christ, our consolation in times of distress. Blessed are those called to the suffering of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep us safe for everlasting life. Amen.
silence, let us thank Jesus for his presence in our souls. My Jesus, I believe in your presence in the most holy sight. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come please spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself to you, never permit me to be separated from you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We shall now pray the Anima Christi, the prayer for vocations, and prayer to St. Michael, the Archangel. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, liberate Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separate from me, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call on me. In close to you, bid me. That with your saints, I may praise you forever and ever. Prayer for vocations. Let us ask God to give worthy priests, brothers and sisters to his holy church. O oh God, we graciously beseech thee to bless us as with many priests, my brothers and sisters, who will gladly respect their entire lives to serve thy church and to make thee known their God. Bless our families, bless our children. Choose from our homes those who are ready for thy work. Pray for us, pray for our priests and religious, obtain for us many more. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God be with you and come from you and pray, and to the devil, prince, and the companies, by the power of God, trust us into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who cry upon Tomorrow evening at 6 p.m., Father will be meeting with the leaders from the men's club, women's club, all the minds, and uh, to pursue and plan for the summer. We have uh, our Lady Provincial Health Feast Day on June 27th, and uh, we're going to have a big celebration of our church fiesta at that time. So, and then we'll have another event on August 14th. But uh, on the 16th, the men's club meets, third Wednesday of the month, 6 p.m. in the parish hall. Then this next weekend, There'll be an in pew for the AMA, our uh, annual ministry appeal. Most of us got letters from the diocese, and this won't pertain to you, but any of us that didn't respond or didn't get a letter, we'll make sure that you get the information uh, next 
Saturday or Sunday. And then uh, on the 30th, which would be a Wednesday, Father is lined up, and I, I need to tell you this, this is very special. He has, uh, from the Carmelites, it's a, a renowned Carmelite spiritual director and guide, Father Matthew Williams. And he will give our English-speaking community a conference entitled The Eucharist, The Sacrament of God's Love. It'll be for one hour, and then the following day, uh, he'll have a follow-up with another priest, I believe from uh, Guatemala, and uh, for the Spanish community. Then, uh, on April 6th, we don't want you to forget that we're going to have the sacrament of reconciliation for our Lenten season, and it'll go from, oh, that's a Wednesday, 5.30 to 7.30, and Father has two priests lined up to, uh, to assist him. So, Make sure you pick up the bulletin. There's a lot of neat things in there. And one of the things we want to uh, commend one of our parishioners by the name of uh, Lucia Leonard. She's headed up the ability of both English speaking and from the Spanish community to get a chance to take a look at our parish hall. It's never looked better. And uh, we're hoping that we're going to be able to rent that out for baptisms, weddings, uh, quinceañeras, in fact, even at birthday parties. And then the, the last thing would be, if I forgot anything, Father, I'll tell you. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay I forgot what to say. <laughs> Just kidding, come on. Let us pray. As we receive, as we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O loving Father, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and all the members of your families in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is sended. Let us go in the peace and love of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Take it away. Oh, it's such a